Hey everyone, Kathy here from Whole Home and Body Health and today I want to give you a little tour of this community that's being built down in Nicaragua. Um, we're about, we're on the coast, on the Pacific coast, about an hour or so from Managua. So I am here because they want to transform a community like this into a low EMF community. So these are tiny houses that are already built and this is where I'm actually staying in this one here. Um, and there's a new community uh, several hundred yards um, from this area that we are going to intentionally create as low EMF or the development company is. And I'm here as a consultant testing the property and helping them to develop um, a plan to keep the entire area as low EMF as possible. So it's really exciting. I'm um, so excited about the fact and optimistic that there's a development company that sees the need for this and is willing to put the time and the effort into creating this community. So I'm just gonna kind of show you around the area and see what I'm finding and what my meters are. Um, obviously, if you want more information about this community, leave a comment below. I'm happy to send you that information. Um, and real quick, if you want to get my free guide on how to lower your EMF right away, my, my top 10 things you can do to lower your EMF in your house right away, uh, it, there will be a link below, so grab that totally free. Um, okay, so let's kind of cruise around here and we're going to see what this whole area has to offer. Um, so I'm going to be cruising around in this little golf cart here that they gave me so I can reach all the areas. There's a couple hundred acres. I forget how big this community is, but um, it's really large and um, there's, a, there's a lot going on. So all kinds of different houses and different neighborhoods. Um, on the property. So let's check it out. Okay, so I'm um, leaving this little neighborhood. This neighborhood is called Ava and it is um, a, a tiny house community as you can see and there's several for sale. They're pretty darn amazing. Um, <clears throat> and as I'm turning the corner here, we're gonna see uh, some larger areas if you don't if a tiny house isn't your thing you're going to see larger homes rather so these are being built now so there's a couple that are already built that my friends is the ocean um beautiful black sand beach ocean so these properties here are pretty killer um they're obviously bigger than the tiny house um, community just here across the street so if you want a little bit more space on the beach that's a pretty good deal all right so I stopped real quick because I see a bank here of uh, utility meters actually only three hooked up but I'm gonna go ahead and test that for radio frequency with my safe and sound pro 2 uh, to make sure that they are not smart I've been told that they are not smart um, and I believe them, uh, it, it does not have an FCC, we're not in America, so it wouldn't have an FCC ID number on it, um, but it doesn't have any kind of code or ID on there um, suggesting radio frequency. All right, so I am going to measure, and this is how you measure a smart meter, everybody. So you wanna stand three feet away with your meter, and I'm gonna keep an eye on the max readings so uh, the peak readings at the top is just telling me kind of what's happening as we go and the max reading will tell me if i'm getting a pulse um, and that it's that pulse that i'm looking for with these meters because i want to make sure that every 10 seconds or 15 seconds or 30 seconds or minute that it's not pulsing so this okay so i've been here for a few minutes now so far, I have not gotten any pulses. Um, that's excellent. Very happy about that. So, I, yet, like I said, I don't think that Nicaragua was using um, quote-unquote smart meters at this point. So, that's pretty amazing. All right, and now what I'm going to do is, since we've got a transformer box here, we've got power coming uh, buried in the ground 
to this area to for this neighborhood and, and all of these homes that are going to share this transformer. I'm just going to take some magnetic and electric field readings um, to see kind of how they're laying the, you know, how the electrical company here is laying the infrastructure and to see if we've got any elevations from the wiring that's coming to this location that will then be a service entrance or a service drop to the houses. Oh, and of note, all of these tiny houses here um, are actually solar powered. So they are not grid tied. Um, they are all on solar, which I will be testing, of course, for dirty electricity. But the low EMF community is not going to be, they're not going to have solar panels on every roof. Um, so, and there will be solar on the grid, but we are um, consulting about how to uh, both filter for that and possibly isolate a little bit, uh, isolate the community a little bit from the solar uh, system so that the fields, of course, inside the houses are really low. Yeah, that's to be expected. And actually, it's pretty low. I'm only getting six milligauss on the transformer. Um, <clears throat> so the power line coming to it is going to be somewhere in the earth. And so I just want to see kind of what we're getting at a distance uh, either direction and make sure that it's not coming kind of into the yard of where this house would be. And it's not. I mean, our, our building, biology, building biology guidelines we want this number for magnetic field readings to be under 0 0.2. We're at 2.4, 2.3, um, you know, I don't know, 20 yards from the home. So that's pretty good. In case you're curious about what the food is like, um, which I would be, of course, as being a nutritionist and being kind of a food snob. So I stopped uh, real quick at the restaurant, uh, which is right by the pool. And I'm having a little breakfast, which is a little tropical fruit. I will not eat all of that. I will save that for later. And some farm fresh eggs, which are pretty incredible. Um, for lunch and dinner, they have uh, pretty typical options. Uh, chicken, steaks, hamburgers. Um, it's good, uh, you know, I would probably be cooking more often and going to the local markets um, for that. Uh, but the restaurant here is pretty decent um, for what it is. Okay, so I've been measuring um, several times per day over the course of the last few days. So my goal here is to get measurements, um, you know, several different times during the day uh, on different days to make sure that I'm kept capturing peak times and all of that. So um, this is actually the general area where this new community is gonna go. So behind me, you can kind of see the edge of the tiny community where I'm staying. And actually it's, it's further back um, in this dense forest. Uh, and it is, um, it butts up against a teak forest, which is, super cool so there's obviously you can tell a significant amount of density in here which is going to uh, keep the community well shielded from any nearby cell towers um, or neighborhood you know these other neighborhoods that are around etc um, there is a cell tower pretty far I don't know the exact I don't know a mile two miles away um, that is impacting the community the tiniest bit. So generally inside this area, I'm getting about 0.01 to 45 microwatts per square meter, which is pretty incredible um, because in the average house I walk into, you know, I start off in the thousands and there will be hot spots of millions of microwatts per square meter from their stuff. Um, it's not uncommon to get 6,000, 7,000, 10,000 that's, you know, outside that's getting a little bit high in, in any given neighborhood in the U S of course, that has to do with, you know, stuff in the neighborhood and nearby cell towers. But, uh, it's perfectly normal to get a thousand microwatts per, 
per square meter in a city with a lot of cell towers, which all cities have. So um, the fact that I'm getting under 10, uh, that's typically my goal um, as a building biologist. I wanna get the area under 10 microwatts per square meter because that seems to be an area where the largest majority of people feel good. Now, there are certainly people that are going to need it to be lower. It's a very rare person, but they definitely exist. Um, and the good news is how they plan to build um, with these dense concrete walls, they block a significant amount of the radio frequency. So I did test a house over here earlier today in the a different community that is in a direct line of sight of the cell tower. And I was getting about 1,200, 1,500 outdoors, but inside I was getting under five, um, except when I got to a window, and in the window I was getting about 300 microwatts per square meter. Now that's in a direct line of sight of the tower. This community will not be, um, it, is, it will be heavily protected by the density of the teak forest and the trees. Um, so, and this home is going to have the ability to shield the windows and do some things to re and plant some trees and do some stuff to reduce their exposure as well. So the highest level I got in here today was 25 microwatts per square meter. That was one little spot. That was the highest peak. It was a real quick pulse. Um, and then everywhere else, uh, I got maybe five. I mean, there's a lot of lots in here, 80, 100 lots. So um, 25 was the highest. And then I was typically around two, three, four. Occasionally I got a 10, I got a 16. Um, and so that's the highest number I've gotten so far with my measurements in the last couple of days. So on other days, the highest number I got was six. And then uh, inside some of the other lots, it was well, it was under one um, most of the time. So this is extremely low. Um, and you know, the inside the community, there's gonna be rules where people can't have Wi-Fi. You know, they can have a hardwired internet, um, but you're not going to be using your phone in there. You're not going to be, um, you know, using your sound bar and Alexa's and all of these wireless devices. There's going to be rules against that to keep the community low. And then, you know, I fully ex anticipate and expect it to stay this low inside the house. It's, pr it's going to be zero under, under one, um, given the thick concrete walls. You know, that, that highest area I got that was 25, occasionally maybe, gosh, maybe you'll get one or two inside, which is extremely low, much lower than any most places you can get inside the, uh, the U.S. So, yeah, that's the lowdown on the community. Of course, there's no electric or magnetic fields because there aren't uh, power lines yet, but the, the walls are going to be shielded. Um, the power lines are going to be shielded uh, and filtered, so we're going to take care of a lot of that as well. So for me, one of the best things about this location is that I can come and get my uh, morning sunlight every morning, do yoga on the beach, on the black sandy beach, and then go for a swim and get in some really incredible grounding and earthing. Um, so I'm getting sun, grounding, earthing, exercise, really good, fresh, clean air. Um, it's pretty incredible. Check out how there's no one on the beach. So very rarely do I see someone walking up and down the beach, but I'm here. Go for a swim every morning and for a walk on the beach and then do my yoga. All right, everyone, it is the next day. I'm doing some more testing. I'm actually in uh, one of the more developed communities here called San Diego. Um, some beautiful homes. 
uh, that you can see around uh, a lot of lots still for sale. Um, this community does have a more direct line of sight to the cell tower, which I will show you in a second. You, it's over here. Um, you can't see it at this moment, but I just wanted to show you some of the readings that I'm getting here for these houses that already exist and are in um, <clears throat> the line of sight of the towers. So 200 here, which honestly, um, given the way we live in this world today, isn't that bad, it's actually pretty good. So you can hear it, you can hear the antennas. Um, and there's a spike of 354. So, you know, there's a lot here that's for sale. So this house, once this house, this house here, um, will be lower once this house across the street is built um, and more trees are planted, etc. So, again, the highest reading I've gotten in this community here is about 1600, although there was one corner lot in the distance that actually measured 6,000 uh, because it had the most direct line of sight to the antennas. So that's obviously high. Uh, but the already existing communities, um, you know, a little bit elevated, but like I mentioned yesterday, in the house that I tested, while it was about 1,200, 1,500 outside, inside, significantly lower and they're going to drop that even more because they're going to shield the windows um, which is the weak spots so i'm going to drive around here a little bit and show you a little bit more of this community and the already um, existing homes Okay, for you golf lovers, I forgot to mention there is a golf course here and frisbee golf, which is super fun. Uh, the area also has horseback riding, um, a turtle sanctuary, uh, massages, um, bonfires, volleyball, beach volleyball, swimming of course. There's a lot of activities to do here with your family. All right, so we've got a soccer field and a tennis court, if you enjoy that. And here's the teak. Uh, this is the beginning of the teak forest um, that has been planted uh, in at the beginning, uh, the edge of the plant uh, community, which is pretty cool. Okay, now I'm much deeper into the proposed area. Um, I'm incredibly low look at that 0.3 uh, and somewhere over in this area they're actually planting a food forest so it's going to be a really cool area with um, some pretty cool uh, I don't know technology to have like it's not a garden but a, a food forest they're calling it so they're going to have uh, you know, native grown um, fruits, trees, vines, uh, vegetables, some just awesome stuff, and a park 
kind of over in this area as well. So how awesome would that be to say, oh, honey, go get me a mango um, or whatever. Just super amazing and just like what an incredible lifestyle. So I just want to talk to you for a second about what it feels like out here. So that's an important thing for me as a building biologist, especially when I'm working with sensitive people. Um, you know, when I, I consider myself to be mildly sensitive, I mean, that's how I got into this field, but I do not pretend to be exquisitely sensitive like many people are. You know, I, I flew down here, uh, it was, I don't know, 12, 13, no, more like 18 hours of travel. And you know, while I felt a little gross, um, I wasn't in pain and I fully respect that there's many electrically hypersensitive people that that would be too difficult for. Um, but I want to talk about, you know, the general feeling, like even though my meters say everything is amazing, there's, uh, your body is the best meter. So we really, for a sensitive person, we really have to talk about how it feels, not what our meters are saying. So as somebody who's mildly sensitive, I can recognize when I'm in an environment that is clean. Um, it feels lighter, it feels calmer, it feels, you can feel the energy, the Earth's own energy. I notice this when I'm in a home and we turn the power off because I'm trying to figure out where specific elevations are coming from and we're trying to get the home as low as possible. When I turn the power off, I can feel it, I notice it. All of a sudden, everything just calms down and it feels lighter. The homeowners usually say they can feel it too. So I know it's not just a placebo for me because I'm not expecting it, I'm not thinking about it. I just realize every time, oh, there's that feeling. And I've noticed that for years when I go hiking, um, when I'm out of the city, when I'm in a forest, when I'm hiking and I'm away from these frequencies, I've always noticed that too. I didn't know what it was. This is long before I even knew the term EMF or radio frequency or electromagnetic fields. But I would always say, gosh, the air feels so good. And so here right now, I feel that. I feel that substantially. In fact, on the whole property, even in some of the areas in, when I'm in the restaurant and you know people are using their phones, I'm still feeling that, that feeling, that calm, awesome, you know, uh, relaxed, light feeling. And part of that is because the environment is low, lower, and part of it because we're near the ocean, um, we've got negative ions here, we've got this dense forest, you know, there's, there's a lot of reasons why the energy feels so much better here. And so I'm really excited about the fact that I'm getting that here and that it just feels, it feels really special. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> I've been walking around for about 10 minutes with my meter on and the low, highest reading I've got is 0.5. So I'm kind of uh, to the north of the development in somewhere in the middle north area, if that makes any sense. Um, but this is, this is the lowest I've gotten yet for that amount of time, uh, 0.5, which is pretty incredible. So, you know, what all this tells me is that uh, there will be times when there's high traffic on the weekends um, when more people are coming into the community that we might get a, a, a few little spikes here and there. Uh, but it, it's Sunday afternoon right now, so people are leaving, and it's much lower. So, you know, if our highest peak is 25 on the weekend, um, I, am, I feel pretty comfortable with that. Uh, I'm a little lost. <laughs> Been driving around for a while. This is dense. And it's a big property. I don't know where I'm going. Ooh, holy crap, I just got lost for like an hour. But I made it out. And then we've got these one bedroom units. Um, and this is where I'm staying. So I'm going to go ahead and take you inside so that you can get an idea of what that one's like. Okay, so this is obviously the front door. 
got a couple little chairs there, which are actually quite comfortable. Um, outside, here is the uh, utility room. So our washing machine here. Sorry again about that wind. Um, here's your solar panel and your breaker panel. Um, more solar equipment. Um, exterior, here is your water heater with uh, propane. Okay, here we are. So, a nice little size. Um, you know, this is a tiny house. Uh, maybe, I don't know what we have, maybe 150 square feet or so. Um, so, kind of a mess here because I'm all my meters there. Um, little dish rack, little sink, and um, a nice window, a little gas range. There is no oven, so you're not going to be baking, um, but this gas range is nice with a hood. Small little fridge, but it's not, um, it's kind of a decent size. I got leftovers in here. If, if you're just one or two people, it's a pretty decent size. Here's your bathroom. Um, just showered, so I'm trying to dry out the towels there. Is kind of nice um, to show you inside here so we've got tile and um, a nice shower head there a window in the unit which is awesome for ventilation and then here's our living space so I just set up my workstation here so I've got my external keyboard and actually you can see I've got my Ethernet cord which is connected to the router, which is in the back of the TV. And I've got it shielded with the shielding cloth, which drops my exposure a good 95% so that I can sit here and work on my computer because I've got a lot of reports to write and that kind of stuff. So another window here, we've got another big window in the front as well, up the entire wall, which I love. The problem is we're supposed to be keeping the windows closed to keep it cool during the day. So that kind of bugs me, but I obviously do have some of my windows open. And then here we go to the upstairs. This is a little bit of a precarious um, stairwell. The, the stairs are a little bit steep. Um, it's not a problem except, you know, when you wake up in the middle of the night and you're a little disoriented, you need to go to the bathroom or something. It can be a little challenging. So here's the bedroom. Uh, you got a nice uh, big uh, cabinet space for you know hanging stuff and drawers, obviously. Little bedside table, a bed. Really simple, um, which I like. And then here's the opposite side here with that big window if you wanted to open it. Um, you've got a mini split for cooling here. And then you've got an outside. Um, so let's step outside. Ooh, the wind is strong. Okay. So you've got this nice little deck outside. It's pretty small. But you could put a nice little chair here. Kind of sit here. You can see the ocean. Wave to your neighbors. Alright, heading back inside. Just to give you a final overview of the place. Um, you can see, obviously, into the downstairs from upstairs. But it's pretty, it's pretty cozy. Um, it's a nice little vacation spot for one or two people. If you're into tiny living, um, I, this would be pretty cool. I think it'd be a little bit too small for me because I don't really have a yoga space. Um, that's really important for me is to have a dedicated area where I can do my yoga every morning. Um, you might be able to make that work here. Uh, it's a little tight, but otherwise it's pretty nice. I, I like the design and I like the layout. Okay, so I've been here for four and a half days, almost five days. I leave in the morning. I've done a load of testing here. Um, I've been getting a sense for uh, you know, the electromagnetic fields on the whole property, um, just a sense of what it would be like to live here. 
Um, and my takeaways are this. I would live here. Um, I, I think the, the geography is incredible. Um, the ocean is amazing. The people are incredibly nice. I've had a really excellent experience with ECI Development Company. Um, the team is amazing, good people. They're sincere about this community. Um, they're fun. I've just, it's, it's been really great. Um, now I do know that there are challenges when you're developing in a developing country. Um, the pace here is a little bit slower. Things can get caught up. Um, you can have delays. You know, COVID in the last three years, of course, changed a lot. And, and there were certainly delays with building and that kind of stuff. So there's always a challenge with that. Um, you know, living in another country that's not your own, uh, moving away from your family and your friends and your culture, a different language, different food, that can be challenging for anyone. That's not everybody's cup of tea. Um, you know, that's a, that's a big consideration. Uh, if, if I were in a position where I could leave my business, I could make enough money remotely, um, I would live here. Uh, from, from a health perspective, I think it's pretty amazing. Um, the community is going to be awesome. You know, um, for an exquisitely sensitive person, um, it might not work. So, you know, full disclosure here, it's going to be an electrified environment. There will be a little bit of solar. There will be um, a grid tie. You know, there's going to be electricity from the grid. And that's not going to work for every person. It's going to be dramatically lower EMF than most 99.99% of homes that exist today. I mean, no question. But I'm not going to sit here and say that if you're exquisitely electrically hypersensitive that it's going to work for you. It might not. I, I would never say that in any circumstance because we just don't know. Um, but for the majority of us that want to live a healthier lifestyle, maybe we're somewhat sensitive like myself or more, it's gonna be pretty awesome. I mean, not only are the community, is the community gonna be low EMF, but you've got the beach, you know, and the sun all the time, which are critical for overall health, um, with the food gardens and, you know, the um, ability to grow your own food, get local tropical fruit, that's gonna be amazing. Um, you know, there's going to be a community of maybe like-minded people, you know, people that would move here, um, are going to have a lot of similarities. So even though you're leaving your friends and family, you're still going to have a community. And I found that just in the four days that I've been here, I've met a bunch of people that are really awesome. So I feel good about that. So yeah, if I could kind of drop everything and move here, I would, I would feel very comfortable doing that. Um, you know, for, for some people, I mean, if I was really wealthy and I could have a home in the U S and a second home here, boy, that would be pretty fantastic. So for those of you that are, are in that position, yeah, I would a hundred percent go for it. Um, or for those of you that are just trying to get away from the hustle and bustle and you want a more healthy lifestyle, low EMF lifestyle, I think it's pretty awesome. Um, I'm yeah. I'm really happy with it. I was worried before I came down that it might not meet my expectations, um, but it has. It has met my expectations and more. Um, so I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah. So if you want more information about this community, I will leave some information below. And again, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to speak about this with anybody. You know, I tried to give you a ton of information here if you're considering it or if you're just curious about what's going on here. So yeah, um, leave any comments below. Do all the things, the likes, the subscribe, whatever, the bell, so that I can continue to get this information to more people. And hope you found this one helpful, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Bye.